Hey everybody, welcome to part two. Man, our hearts and prayers go out to the victims. Four people shot and killed, nine injured. So on the screen, we have the four victims, Mason, Shermer Horn, student age 14, Christian Angulo, student age 14, teacher Richard Aspinwall, and Christina Aramie. Again, our hearts and prayers go out to the victims. And, you know, one thing that hit my mind, which has not been developed or discussed, but I noticed the first two students, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry, um, appear to be minorities based on the names and the looks. And I said, well, gee, I just wonder, not that we want anyone shocked, because I know you're going to have some interesting person. Well, that don't mean nothing, but it makes me wonder if, you know, if there was some type of personal vendetta or racial uh, element to it. Again, just something that um, occurred to me, given the makeup of the school. And why are they on the screen? America's teens, also known as what I identify as America's terrorist. Now the latest example of gun violence in American schools. A 14-year-old student went on a shooting rampage in Georgia, killing two students and two teachers. So he went on a shooting spree wounding several others. Eyewitness News reporter Michelle Fisher here now with the latest on the investigation. Michelle? Well, Mark, what's really frustrating about this situation, the FBI said today this young man had been on their radar for more than a year, but despite the advanced warnings and even previous threats of a school shooting, he was still somehow able to go on this deadly rampage. And that's what really makes me very angry. He's been on the radar for a year. Threats. They even, which I, you know, at this point, when it comes to these children, there needs to be accountability. We don't care about your anger. Heck, everybody gets angry. Or you want to feel important. Or you're just having a bad day. Dusty Dan Jr., the school shooting spree man. The parents need to be held accountable. And the reason I say that is because they spoke with the parents and the father gave some indication. I've seen a few reports on this that there was no need for an alarm. Oh, we talked with them, and, well, at the time, and, now, now we know. There was no need for an alarm when they spoke to the dad. Well, now look on the screen. The darn kid that did the shooting at his whack behind father's how I see him. You sure as hell felt as a parent. I don't care if you lock him up beside him. Yes, I said that. These parents sometimes are in denial, or I'm thinking, and again, it's my commentary, my opinion, you must be in so want to protect your son and hell with everybody else's. The kid was on this terrorist, again, American's teens, also America's terrorist. He was already on the radar for a year despite threats. Are you kidding me? Doesn't seem credible. Well, now we know. Tell this to the families on the screen. In a year, but despite the advanced warnings and even previous threats of a school shooting, he was still somehow able to go on this deadly rampage just one month into this new school year. De warnings. Warnings. We spoke with the parents. I'm sorry. It's not good enough. I was scared I was going to die, to be honest. And when I heard hard lockdown, I knew it was in the drill. And I'm sure that girl wasn't the only one who was afraid that she was going to die. You got kids calling her parents. One lady, what she say? She walked two miles just to get to her child. One mother, she heard, Mr. the phone call. What did her child say to her? Walked two, almost two and a half miles to get to the school. This is a parent's worst nightmare. Can you imagine hard racing? And there are things behind the scene that people maybe they're not maybe don't even consider. Somebody could have a heart attack. Someone's going on, oh now my child. Heart rate then what? Well it's not the kids' fault. All oh, the hell it is, in my opinion. It's to hear about a shooting at their child's school. He said they shooting they shooting in the school and, and the shooter is right across the hall from me. The Can you imagine a parent hearing that? Pick up the phone. Hey, what's going on? Oh, yeah, mom, they're shooting at the school right across the hall from me. What parent would take that lightly? Well, okay, just duck down. Are you kidding me? Oh. 
are you kidding me? What's got you so far? See, we, we, people want to think, think the best of kids and all of that. And that's just not reality. There are people that are just, I don't want to hear about, he needs some counseling, has a problem. Hell, he is a problem. And I cannot wait until they put this 14 year old animal. That's how I see him. I cannot wait until they lock him up in an adult prison. Oh, Whatever happens, let it happen. I cannot wait until they throw his butt in population. Get in there. He needs a life sentence. I don't give, I don't want to hear about his darn problems. Work it out. Freaking idiot. This cold gray killing two. Diabolical piece of crap. Got these four people dead because your monkey, because your ass, you mad. Oh my God. Something, man. Again, they could throw him to the wolves. I do not care. 14 year old students and two teachers before school resource officers stopped his rampage. He is a 14 year old student here at the high school. Again, he has been taken into custody. Uh, he is, he will be charged with murder and he will be tried as an adult. And that's what he, and he needs a life sentence. Whatever the protocol is now for these school teen shooters, all this, well, the police go out and talk to them. It ain't the first time they talk with a parent who said, oh, everything's okay. It's no big deal. Then it's taking a word of certain parents. Are you, th that's enough? What do you expect the parent to say? Well, my kid is diabolical. You know, he loves to shoot. They will lie, in my opinion, say anything to protect their old murderous behind son. Late today, the FBI's Atlanta division sharing a statement saying that in May of last year, it received several tips about online threats of a school shooting involving Gray. But so May of last year, it says, and they're referring to this statement here, it says, I'm going to start with the second paragraph. In May of 2023, the FBI's National Threat Operations Center received several anonymous tips about online threats to commit a school shooting at an unidentified location and time. The online threats contain photographs of guns. Within 24 hours, the FBI determined the online post originated in Georgia and the FBI's Atlanta field office referred the information to the Jackson County Sheriff's Office for action. Well, action was, they didn't take enough action in, in, in my opinion. We talked to his dad and that ain't good enough. The Jackson County Sheriff's Office located a possible subject, a 13 year old male and interviewed him and his father. What did you expect them to say? Again, the Jackson County Sheriff's Office located a possible subject, a 13-year-old male, and interviewed him and his father. The father stated he had hunting guns in the house, but the subject did not have unsupervised access to them. Well, it looks like you must be lying a date. He got them somehow, unless you okay him access to them on a school day. And, and if that's the case, which I doubt, what would he need to go to school for with a gun? Again, the father stated he had hunting guns in the house, but the subject did not have unsupervised access to them. The subject did not make the threats online. It wasn't me. Whew. The subject did not make the threats online. Jackson County alerted local schools for continued monitoring of the subject. Are you serious? So you're asking the school to monitor. How can they monitor and teach knowing there's some dangerous Neanderthal up in there with a gun? They want to kill people. Th that's the best you came up with. See, when it comes to this right here, something more has to be done because it's not the first time they talk with a parent. Didn't have no probable cause. At the time, there was no probable cause for arrest or to take any additional law enforcement action on the local, state, or federal levels. Or at that time, well, what the heck about this time? Four dead, nine injured. What's been going on the norm is not working. More has to be done. So when they find these students and you've got these threats right here and you identify them, they should go ahead and just pull them out of school. 
for the safety of others. Pull them out. I don't give a darn middle class rich. Pull them out of school for the safety of others. Maybe this, maybe these four be alive today. The father, I think, needs to be charged. Oh, I sure do. Because he's the one who said there were honey guns in the house, and the sub, but the subject, meaning his son, did not have unsupervised access to them. Well, obviously he did, so either you gave him access to them, or you lied, and he has unsupervised access. And so, so now we know. And then the fact that he was taken, <laughs> I cannot believe this. Ooh, with that kind of weapon, he was taken alive. In our community, community, in the B.C., you can be a minority and get shot for having a phone in your hand. And guess what? Heads up. You can be shot in your house for saying somebody, I rebuke thee, sensing evil, a demonic Neanderthal with a badge. These two kids are dead. Family, friends, relatives, just heartbreaking. This teacher here, two teachers, won't be going home to their families. Probably husbands, father, mom, their parents, children if they have any. Why? Because Greg got mad. Junior Brad got mad and took a school. This is crazy. Something's got to change. Talking to the parents is not enough. When they identify these individuals, they should be pulled immediately out of the school. Mm-hmm. Pull, pull them out. Pull out. Well, there's, we should have to keep waiting. This protocol where we spoke with them, what the hell do you expect them to say? At the time, there was no probable cause for arrest or to take any additional law enforcement action. Well, now there is. There's cause for arrest and there's cause for people being fighting PTSD. There's cause for arrest. There's cause for funerals. There's cause for death. And he's the reason that these people on the screen. Lies interrupted. Whatever the current status quo is for these investigative measures, it's not enough. I don't care. Well, he didn't do it. Well, we can't take a chance. Whenever they find these students and they find out who the individuals are, you find a subject. The subject needs to be taken out of school for a year. Let your parents deal with your crazy uh, murderers behind. It'll save lives. And now the shooter named Greg, he, he's still here. His parents get to visit him and we got to pay for this murderous clown. Pay for his health care, three hots in the cot, TV, internet. Maybe he should be put down like he put them down. I have no sympathy for the shooter, again, or his family. I don't give a darn what they're going through. You you put this, this your defective murderous DNA that's here. These people are innocent. Oh my, I'm going to stop this video because I'm getting emotional. Woo, man. Ooh, I can't say what I really want to say, but you know. This is just ridiculous. Dusty Day and son having a bad, I'm going to go shoot the people up. So think, and this has to be premeditated. It said in May 2023, they received several tips. We're in August 2024. The, what, is they, what is it saying? How your your you, the mind process things? You have to think it. Speak it, then you execute it. The father should face charges as well. You said he doesn't have access unsupervised. Well, which one is it? Somehow he had access, whether supervised or unsupervised. Well, we know nine are injured and four people are unalived. Let me know what you all think. Thanks for watching. Feel free to comment, like, subscribe, and share. Our hearts and prayers go out to the families. I just cannot imagine the, the pain that they're going through. Fourteen-year-old. I hope he gets life in prison if they can't give him the chair. And I'm out.